Well, my dear students, we are now back again. This is uh, 36th lecture, 36th lecture in the series of mechanics of metal forming now. So, if you recall in the previous lecture, we continued the one dimensional problem. We started with the from the basic concept of finite element method. We, we took one example of uh, the spring element and then a complicated spring element and then we also took examples of uh, bar element. We derived the basic equations, finite element equation and how we calculate the stiffness matrix basically. So, we would continue the same last time, uh, last problem that we started in lecture 35. So, 1D problem of bar element. So, if you, if you recall, so this was the case, the problem where the two bar elements are connected in series and the, at the junction 2 element where the 2, no doubt the 2 bar elements diameters are different here. So, the element 1 and element 2. So, uh, stiffness matrix was calculated last time 1 and in K 2 if you recall. So, one can assemble this K 1 and K 2 which was last, it is again shown here you can see. So, this is what the global equation, so that is E A by cap divided by L and the elements are 2 minus 2 0 minus 2 3 minus 0 minus 1, 1 u 1 u 2 u 3 and this is what is equal to f 1 f 2 f 3 the corresponding force forces at the nodal forces. So, load and boundary conditions are now if we see from the figure the nodes the, the in both ends are fixed. So, the displacements are 0 and therefore, u 1 and u 3 are 0 and f 2 because the joint 1 joint 2 the load is given as p in the direction of x. So, f 2 is p it is given. So, in that global equation, uh, if you substitute the u 3 as 0 and f 2 as p, it looks like this. So, because the the two elements are 0 in the the displacement vector. So, the 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 row 1 and uh, column, the first row and column and similarly, the third row and column are deleted. So, one gets this equation that is E A by L multiplied by the matrix L having only one element as 3 u 2 and this is equal to capital P. So, that means u 2 the displacement u 2 is determined as capital P L divided by 3 E A that is the simple answer. And thus, the u 1, u 2 and u 3 the displacement vectors become P L by 3 E A 0 1 0. So, that is the answer and uh, then the stresses in element 1 can also be calculated like. So, stresses means sigma 1 would be simply capital E epsilon 1 and that is E B 1 U 1 and that is equal to E minus 1 by L 1 by L and u 1 u 2 as the vector displacement vector. So, if you simplify this, this has been shown here 
and uh, it is equal to p by 3 a. And similarly, the stress in element 2 is calculated that is sigma 2 that is nothing but capital E epsilon 2 that is the strain in 2 node 2 and that is simply the E and displacement vector capital B 2 and uh, U 2 and that when you simplify the stress in element 2 sigma 2 is comes as minus p by 3 a which indicates that the bar is in compression because minus sign. So, one can check the result. So, the only thing is that to be noted that in this case the calculated stresses in element 1 and 2 are exact within the linear theory of a one dimensional bar structure. It will not help if uh, one further divide the element 1 or 2 into a smaller fine element because it is the exact value has been taken. Secondly, for tapered bar if, if the bar could have been tapered this is the linear bar round bar. So, if it is tapered bar so the averaged value of the cross sectional uh, area uh, should be used for the element. And thirdly, uh, one need to find the displacement first in order to find the stresses. Since, uh, we are using the displacement based finite element method, right. So, you have to first find out the displacement and then calculate the stresses in the elements. So, that is the few points are to be noted and let us take another example of the bar here. Here the, the bar is one element and uh, let us determine the support reaction forces at the two ends of this bar which is shown. Uh, the data that is given here are the, the p load is acting at the center of the bar in x direction at node 2. So, the p is 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 Newton the material property E is given as 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 Newton per mm square. Cross sectional area is given as 250 mm square and the length of the that is the whole bar is given as 2 L and that is the L is 150 uh, mm and uh, displacement is allowed displacement is 1.2 mm. So, how to proceed? So, one has to find out the support reaction forces at the two ends that is the node 1 and 3. So, as the problem how to proceed? Huh? See the, the contact the, the node 1 is fixed, node 3 is not fixed, there is a wall after so, the delta that it will delta is given as 1.2 mm gap. So, how to proceed, how to find out the reaction? So, one has to first check to see if or not the contact of the bar with the wall on the right side occur or not this has to be seen. So, how to see it? So, to do this one can imagine the that the wall on the right is removed and the let us calculate the displacement of the right inside. So, the displacement of the right inside can be calculated as capital P by capital P L by E A as usual. So, using this data it is calculated that it is 1.8 mm and this 1.8 mm is more than the value which is given 1.2 mm. So, that means, that means the contact occur and because the contact occur at this end. So, there would be a reaction. So, that means you have to the global finite element equation is to be found. So, 
let us find out for this situation and that is how the node 1, 2 and 3 is created, right. So, let us find the, the global finite element equation and uh, this is what is written here. So, using the same previous uh, the global format, so it is written as capital E by A L and the stiffness matrix where all the all are assembled. Then there is a displacement vector u 1, u 2, u 3 and the force vector f 1, f 2, f 3. So, the load is given in the problem, the boundary condition as the boundary condition f 2 which is equal to p and that is given in the problem as 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 Newton, right. Okay. And uh, u 1 is fixed that is the element node 1 is fixed, so it is u 1 is 0 u 3 please remember u 3 delta it is given in 1.2 mm right it is given as 1.2 mm that means u 3 is 1.2 mm so one can write down you, you one can substitute this boundary condition in the the global equation and that becomes here so this is shown here so, it, it, this equation shows the set of three linear equations. So, if you locate the second equation out of this because, so that second equation gives as E A by L, the stiffness then it is 2 minus 1 and U 2 by del, uh, uh, U 2 and delta and is equal to capital P matrix that means it is E A by capital L 2 U 2 multiplied by P plus E A by L delta this is what is had been shown here. So, if it is solved U 2 displacement at the middle one is calculated as half of capital P L by E A plus delta and that comes out to be 1.5 mm right and uh, therefore, the, the displacement vectors becomes u 1, u 2, u 3 and it is equal to 0, 1.5 and 1 1.2 mm. That is the we have got the displacement vector. So, to calculate the support reaction it is a kind of stress that is the reaction force then one can apply the first and third equation in the global finite element method which was previously. So, if, if uh, we apply the first equation that gives F 1 that is capital F 1 force F 1 which is equal to capital E A by capital E A by L 1 minus 1 0 and uh, U 1 U 2 U 3 and that gives E A by L minus U 2 and that is minus 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 Newton. And the third equation gives F 3 which is equal to E A by capital L 0 minus 1 1 U 1 U 2 U 3 and that is equal to capital E A by L minus U 2 plus U 3 and that is nothing but 1 multiplied by 10 to the power 4. So, F 3 comes out to be 1 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 Newton. So, one can check the result right. So, one can check. So, all these bar element we have taken that is either it is the point load in the direction of the bar. Let us consider the distributed load most of the situation when it is distributed load means if the distributed load is q per unit uh, direction that is along x. So, here is the case of a distributed load of on the bar element. So, let us see it is an interesting one. So, again the it is one element i and j as the nodes and q is the distributed load. So, if it is uniformly distributed axial load q in Newton mm r Newton meter r pound per inch this can be converted into two equivalent nodal forces of magnitude q capital L by 2 
when capital L is the length of the element and uh, one can verify this by considering the work done by the load Q, because the work done is as previously explained, it is integral over the domain from 0 to L half of u q d x is equal to half of integral 0 1 and u zeta q L d zeta and that is equal to q capital L by 2 integral over 0 to 1 u zeta d g zeta. So, once you now introduce the safe function that is n i n n j and the vector displacement vector. So, if you expand it, so we get the, the, the work done by the load q as half of the displacement vector is u i u j multiplied by q l by 2 q l by 2 that is the last one you can see here. right? So, that means the work done in the element becomes half of u t f f e with the f e which is equal to q l by 2 q l by 2 and this is what has been shown in equation 22. Okay. That means, uh, from if you recall back the work done the strain energy is equal to work done concept for the element then one can write down that 1 by 2 u t k u and that is equal to 1 by 2 f at 1 by 2 u t f plus half of u t f e that is equation 23 and that yields k u is equal to f plus f f that is what is the equation 24. So, the new nodal force vector becomes your f plus f and uh, that is f 1 f i plus q l by 2 and f j plus q l by 2 that is the equation 25. And, uh, and if you assembly of the bar is taken, so one can see here the assembly of the bar like uh, it can be taken the, the this so far we did it taking as the element one element and having two nodes. The same thing can be done one element and three nodes there is intermediate node considering that now it is divided into two elements. So, then you have to assemble it the for the element 1 and element 2 same bar one bar, but two element. So, it is shown here one can see element node 1, node 2 and node 3 and the forces are q l by 2, q l by 2 at both end and in between the force is q l if it is right. So, that is the one can solve and check it again. Now, let us take so far whatever we did the element was aligned in one direction only, it was in one direction only 1 d that is how. Suppose that this element is aligned in two dimension two direction that is that is the bar uh, when it uh, its elements are in two dimension and three dimension if it is usual case is three dimension right. So, let us take first the 2 d. So, what is basic simplification are to be done? So, this is what shows the 2 d case of the bar all right. So, this 2 d case of the bar uh, where the bar is inclined at an angle theta. So, the, the x y coordinate is uh, there. So, angle theta is your x direction of the bar along the direction of the bar x and 90 degree is y. So, the node i and j and theta is there. So, then u i and uh, you can resolve the u i displacement is along uh, bar that is node i j. So, its component is u i and u j there. So, one can take 
now because it is two dimensional problem so the node i will have two degree of freedom and similarly the node j has two degree of freedom okay so then we say two degree of freedom that is i u i and v j v i right u i and v i similarly u j v j for the two okay this is clear so as the coordinate system is shown here so the then one can now uh, in with respect to this one can consider the local coordinate system and global coordinate system as far as the assembly is concerned so in the local coordinate system what we have variables we have x y and then the degree of freedom nodal is u i and v i right that is there is one degree of freedom at the node okay in case of global you have capital x and capital y right and the displacement are ui and vi and there is two degree of freedom at a node right so lateral displacement that is vi uh, does not uh, contribute to the stretch of the bar within the linear theory this has to be noted so what we do here what we require to do so that the case becomes similar to the previous one now because you are taking into 2d and now you have a local frame and there is a global frame so that means you must know the transformation from local to global so the transformation is shown here that means u i prime would be u i cos theta plus v i sin theta and that is nothing but the vector l m u i v i and similarly v i prime is minus u i sin theta plus v i cos theta and that is minus m l u i v i that is the vector. So this transformation will simplify very clearly and will give a better result. So, the same thing now it is converted in the equation number 26 as the matrix form. So, in the matrix form it becomes then this transformation that means u i prime v i prime as the displacement becomes l m minus m l and u i v i r in very simple manner it can be shown as as a tensor form u i is equal to t u i where the transformation t represents the transformation matrix that is equal to the elements having l m minus m and l and please note that this transformation matrix is a orthogonal that means t inverse is equal to t transpose that the orthogonality right so for the two node of the bar element one can assemble as shown here in 28 so for the because it is two nodal so if you apply the uh, the matrix form so it becomes as ui prime vi prime uj prime and vj prime that is equal to the transformation matrix multiplied by your u i v i and u j v j that is what has been shown in 28 or simply it can be shown that u i u prime is equal to t u and that is transpose is in fact uh, t uh, bar 0 0 t the nodal forces are transformed in the same way as the the force that is the f prime is equal to t f that is also uh, has to be suffered these forces so again transformation comes into picture and that <coughs> what has been shown in figure uh, equation 30 here all right so um, the stiffness matrix for the 2d case becomes for the 2d space becomes for this situation 
in the local coordinate system it becomes E A by E L as you remember 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and U I prime U 2 prime and that is equal to F uh, F I prime and F J prime right. So, if we augment this equation one can write down E A by capital L and this the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement matrix having the two degree of freedom as u i prime v i prime u j prime v j prime and that is equal to the force matrix that is f i prime 0 f j prime 0 because the, the force is in only one direction. So, r one can simply write is as k prime u prime is equal to f prime and uh, if you use the transformation which is given in 29 and 30 one can find out that k prime t u is equal to t f and uh, if you multiply both side by t transpose and uh, noticing that t transpose multiplied by t becomes in unity. So, one can obtain as t uh, transpose k T u is equal to f and thus the element stiffness matrix k in the global coordinate system can be written as that means k is T transpose k T that is shown in 32 all right. So, this transpose uh, stiffness matrix k is a 4 by 4 symmetric matrix because now 2 degree of freedom right and uh, then this k in the explicit form can be written here which is shown in equation 33 all right. So, k is E A by L and that is a 4 by 4 matrix having the elements on the top row u i v i u j v j the corresponding displacement nodal displacement has been marked these elements are shown. So, calculation of the directional cosines L and M can be done now easily. So, L becomes your cos theta direction cosine that is simply capital X j minus X i by capital L and M is nothing but the sin theta that is capital Y j minus Y i by capital L that is the 34 equation. So, that is the value of L and if you substitute in the equation 33, you can get the whole set of stiffness matrix in terms of the local coordinate system and to the global coordinate system. So, the structure of the bar element, the structure stiffness matrix is assembled by using the element stiffness matrix in the usual way as we have already seen in 1 D problem. So, then likewise one can then calculate the, the element stress like sigma which is equal to capital E epsilon and that is capital E B U I U J and that is nothing but capital E minus 1 by L 1 by L and that is L m 0 0 0 0 L m and u i v i u j v j and that is your sigma is E by capital L minus m uh, minus L minus m L m and u i v i u j v j and that is what has been shown in equation 35 here all right. So, that is from the uh, the two dimensional case of the bar. Let us take an example here where the, the, the multi point constants are shown of these bars. So, these bars are connected three bars rather and uh, it has a multi point constant like the node 1, 2 and 3 and these are connected these bars are connected in a triangular manner right angle manner. So, and there is a force acting on this you can see this figure node 1 
the bar 3 is inclined at 45 degree. From the node 1, bar 1 is vertical and from node 2, the bar 2 is horizontal and the, the node 2 is a sliding, it is a sliding uh, connection. So, roller, we call it as a roller joint. So, you notice the directions that is at the roller joint, there is a x and y local coordinate system and the length of the element 1 is capital L, 2 and 3 are also equal to capital L. So, the global coordinate system is attached at uh, node 1 here. So, x is horizontally and capital Y there. So, now you look at here the global coordinate system and uh, global and local coordinate system both are attached here. So, this is a case which is a plane stress, plane truss case it is in fact, it is a simple plane truss case. So, the force P is given as 1000 kilo Newton, capital L is given as 1 meter, capital E is given as 210 giga Pascal. Cross sectional area of the the element is 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4 minus 4 m meter square and uh, for element 1 and 2, whereas for element 3, the cross sectional area is 6 under root 2 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 4 meter square. So, let us find out the displacement and reaction forces. So, now if you if you recall and if you have understood the the derivation for a previous def derivation where we derive the k stiffness matrix so you can use it and then assemble here so we have in this case an inclined roller at the node 3, which needs a special attention in the finite element solution therefore. And uh, we first assemble the global finite element equation for the this particular case of truss, right. So, let us take the element 1. So, element 1, your theta is your 90 degree and uh, L is 0 and M is 1. So, because the direction cosines. Okay. So, you can find out the stiffness matrix K 1 by this way. So, the K 1 is calculated as by using the equation previous where the displacement are u 1 v 1 and u 2 v 2. So, all those elements are written here. Similarly, you write it for the element 2 when the theta is 0. So, L is 1 and M is 0 and so you put substitute the value in the stiffness matrix and you find the value of K 2 which is shown here in Newton meter. And finally, if you see the element 3 in the figure where theta is 45, so L is 1 by root 2 and M is also 1 by root 2. So, K 3 can also be obtained like here. So, once we have calculated k1, k2 and k3, k3 the three elemental stiffness. So, then one can assemble to get the global finite element equation, right. Because it is symmetry, so you had find it has been shown here. That means, it is the global finite element equation is 1260 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 multiplied by this matrix stiffness global stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement vector that is u 1 v 1, u 2 v 3, u 3 v 3 and the it is equal to the force vector that is f 1 x, f 1 y, f 2 x, f 2 y, 
and f 3 x f 3 y other things are symmetric here. All right. So, load and boundary conditions. Now, let us impose the load and boundary condition. So, if you look at the geometry of the given problem, the boundaries u1 and v1 is equal to v2 and that is all equal to 0 and uh, v3 prime is also 0 okay? and uh, f 2 x is equal to p which is given and f 1 x is equal to 0. That if, if you see the bound load and boundary condition both. So, the force boundary condition and the displacement boundary condition is like here. And uh, if you use the transformation relationship and the boundary condition, then one can find out that is the v 3 prime is equal to minus root 2 by 2, root 2 by 2 and the displacement vector is your u 2 uh, u 3 v 3 and that is nothing but root 3 by 2 minus u 3 plus v 3 is equal to 0 and that means u 3 minus v 3 is equal to 0 and that is a multi point constant that is how we call it as a multi point constant. Similarly, uh, we have uh, a relationship for the force at node 3 that means f 3 x prime and that is root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 f 3 uh, x and f 3 y and that is equal to root 2 by 2 f 3 x plus f 3 y and that is equal to 0. right? So, where the f 3 x plus f 3 y is equal to 0. So, applying the load and uh, boundary condition in the, the structure finite element equation by deleting 1 and 2 and fourth row and column. So, one can get this equation. So, that is this equation if we further uh, do the uh, like uh, multi point constant and the force relation at the node 3, if you apply the equation becomes this one that means 1260 multiplied by 10 to the power 5, then the stiffness matrix part and uh, the displacement is u 2, u 3 and uh, u 3 and that is equal to force p f 3 x minus f 3 y and which is 1 uh, 1260 multiplied by 10 to the power 5, 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 0 1 u 2 u 3 and p by 1 uh, f 2 x minus f 3 x. Okay. And uh, likewise the third equation we will get as uh, f 3 x which is equal to minus 1260 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 u 3. So, if you substitute this uh, values into the second equation and uh, rearrange the whole thing, one can get uh, this equation which is 1260 multiplied by 10 to the power 5, 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 u 2 u 3 and p 0. So, if you solve this, one can obtain the displacement. So, u 2 and u 3 can be calculated All right, and that gives the value here. Uh, in meter that is u 2 is 0 0.01191 meter and u 2 comes out u 3 comes out to be 0 0.003968 meter. So, from the global finite element equation 
one can then calculate the reaction forces. So, reaction forces are the, the vector is your F 1 x, F 1 y, F 2 x, F 2 y, F 2 z and if you use in the global equation, one can get all these values, right. So, you can check the result. Uh, a general multipoint constant can also be described like it is the summation over j, a j u j is equal to 0 that is the general multipoint constant problem where a j are the constants and u j's are the nodal displacement components. Uh, in fact, uh, in finite element software such like your uh, uh, MSC Nastron, it uses only uh, need to specify this relation to the software. The software will take care of everything, right. So, that is the way one can have and uh, there are penalty approach for handling boundary conditions and uh, multi constant uh, uh, multi point constants as well. So, that is the simple case. So, for the bar element we took it the 2 d case. Let us now again take the how we proceed for the 3 d case for the same bar element, right. So, just like we converted the bar element into local coordinate system and a global coordinate system in 2 d case, we here convert in the 3 d case. So, the this bar element now you have the each node will have 3 degree of freedom in case of 3 d case, right. That means, node i and node j if it is indicated here. So, it is now shown here the local coordinate system is now what is? local coordinate system x, y, z and then the, the displacement would be per node u i, v i and w i. That means, 1 degree of freedom at the node, whereas in the global what is the transformation coordinate system is capital X, capital Y, capital Z and uh, the global displacement are u i, v i and w i and 3 degree of freedom at the node is there, right. So, the element stiffness matrix are calculated in the local coordinate system and then transformed into the global coordinate system capital X, capital Y, capital Z, where they are assembled, all right. Same way we can follow. So, if you recall the finite element uh, uh, analysis software package etcetera will do this transformation automatically usually. So, what would be the input data for this bar element? So, the input data would be capital X, capital Y, Z for each node, capital E that is the material property and cross sectional area for the each element you require and then you can go ahead in the similar way as we did it here, ok. Now, let us go ahead with this slightly complicated case where we take a the beam element. Let us take the simple plane beam, beam element as shown here in figure, right. So, a beam element is rather subjected to the node i and j which is subjected to uh, rotation as well as nodal rotation. So, if the this beam element a simple plane beam element is taken and uh, the length is capital L, if capital I is taken as the moment of inertia of the cross sectional area capital E is taken as the elastic modulus and V, V x is taken as the deflection that is the lateral displacement of the neutral axis. If now the neutral axis that passes through the 
neutral axis it is assumed that it does not deflect. So, as usual the rotation about the z axis if it is associated. So, theta would be uh, taken as d v by d x and the shear force can be taken capital F which is f x and moment about z axis can be taken as m x right. So, you see in the figure the x direction and y direction there is a moment i at the node i and moment uh, j m j at the j th and theta i and theta j is also shown and the corresponding displacement v i f i and uh, v j f j is shown. So, keeping this in mind and uh, if you recall the elementary beam theory as I told you, you must have a equation, you must have a partial difference p d e corresponding to the process of the problem. So, here the beam is taken as the beam theory. So, the elemental beam theory has got this equation as shown in equation 36. All right. So, this is E i deva uh, d square d 2 v by d x square and that is the m x the moment this is the equation and then the stress is calculated as m y by i that is in 37. So, if we use direct method here uh, using the result from the elementary beam theory to compute each column of the stiffness matrix. So, this figure what is shows the element stiffness equation there. So, one can see that this is what we calculate the stiffness distribution matrix and that is E i by L cube and the, the element the stiffness matrix and then there is a displacement matrix consisting of displacement and rotation and this is the force matrix vector uh, force vector including forces and moment. So, that is shown in 38. So, this is what is the elemental stiffness matrix for the local node i j r 1 2 simply right. So, as far as the formal approach is concerned one can apply the formula 39 here. All right. So, if you apply this formula as the for the stiffness matrix K, which is integral 0 to L B T E I B D X. So, to derive this, let us introduce the safe function. So, we have to choose the four safe function that is n 1 x, n 2 x, s 3 x and 4 x. So, if, if it is taken the safe function as uh, uh, the cubic safe function, so it becomes n 1 x is 1 minus thrice x square by L square plus twice x cube by L cube n 2 x is x minus 2 x square by L plus x cube by L square and then it is n 3 x is thrice x square by capital L square minus twice x cube by L cube and then n 4 x is minus x square by capital L plus x cube by L square. That is what has been shown these uh, safe function in equation 40. You may choose a different safe function no doubt right. So, uh, then one can represent the deflection as V x is equal to capital N u, capital N is the safe function vector 
vector of safe function and then u is the displacement vector. So, this v x is nothing but n 1 x, n 2 x, n 3 x, n 4 x and that is your v i theta i, v j theta j that is what has been shown in 41. So, this is a cubic function. Notice that n 1 plus n 3 is equal to 1, n 2 plus n 3 l plus n 4 is equal to x, okay, which simplifies that uh, the rigid body motion is represented by the assumed deformed shape of the beam. All right. So, that is the rigid body motion consideration. So, one can one knows that the curvature of the beam is given as d 2 v by d x square and that is nothing but d 2 by d x square n u and that is nothing but equal to capital B u that is what is has been shown in equation 42 where the strain displacement matrix capital B is given by capital B is given by what? That is d 2 by d x square capital N that is the safe function vector and that is nothing but n 1 uh, prime x, n 2 prime x, n 3 prime x, n 4 prime x and that is if you calculate the these primes that is the derivatives it becomes minus 6 by L square plus 12 by x L cube and then this n 2 prime x becomes minus 4 by L plus 6 x by L square and uh, n 3 prime x becomes 6 by L square minus 12 by x L cube and n 4 prime x becomes minus 2 by L plus 6 s L square that is what is the equation 43. So, strain energy stored in the beam element if, if one is interested to find out it can be calculated as the last explained that means, the strain energy it would be equal to what? It is simply 1 by 2 over the integral of the domain sigma t multiplied by strain d v and because it is a two dimensional problem. So, double integral will appear see it is a volume integral volume. So, the volume it is 2 d problem. So, double integral will be there. So, that becomes simply 1 by 2 in first integral is 0 to L and the second integral is your over the domain and minus m y by i transpose 1 by e m by uh, m y by i d a d x and that is simply 1 by 2 over the integral 0 to L m t 1 by e i m t x is equal to 1 by 2 over the integral 0 to L deva 2 v by deva x square transpose e i deva 2 v by deva x square d x and that is nothing but half of over the integral 0 to L capital B u transpose E i and then within bracket capital B u d x and that once you simplify it becomes half of u t multiplied by over the integral 0 to L b t E i b d x multiplied by u. So, we therefore conclude that the stiffness matrix for the the simple beam element is k. This k is integral 0 to L b t e i b d x that is the simple and the values of b t and all those things is shown here in equation 43 and uh, e and i is are well known. So, one can then find the the stiffness matrix. So, if you apply the result 
which has been shown here in equation 43 and uh, if one carries out the integration, one can arrive at the same stiffness matrix which was earlier given in equation 38. So, combining the axial stiffness that is the bar element, one can obtain the stiffness matrix of general two dimensional beam element. So, the general two dimensional beam element the stiffness matrix becomes this one. So, this is what has been shown here. So, now you look at the top row the, the elements corresponds to u i v i theta i then u j v j theta j right. So, these are shown here. So, this is in fact 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 it is 6 by 6 matrix. So, this 3 d case of the beam element becomes a stiffness matrix is 6 by 6 right. So, the 3 d element uh, beam element the stiffness matrix is found in the local 2 d coordinate system first and then it is transformed into the global 3 d coordinate system uh, which is to be assembled. So, that is the way we the procedure uh, the assembly procedure becomes the same. So, the important is to find out to notice the k matrix that is the stiffness matrix and then, then you have the displacement uh, vector and then the, the force vector and you one can solve. So far we discuss uh, 1D cases, but the when we consider the element from the 2D and 3D consideration side. Now, let us see some of the theories basic theory concerning two dimensional problems right and uh, so let us see some of the reviews of the basic theory for the two dimensional problem. In general the stresses and strains in a structure consist of six component right. What are those six component? That is sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, sigma x y uh, and uh, if it is two dimensional then tau x y, tau y z and tau z x this for stresses and for strain it is epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon z and then the shear component x y, y z and z x for the strains. So, look at this figure it is a cubic and the, the direct stresses are sigma x, sigma y, sigma z and the corresponding shear stresses on the faces are shown here. So, under certain uh, condition the state of the stresses and strains can be simplified. A general three dimensional structure analysis uh, can therefore, be reduced to a two dimensional analysis here. Okay. So, this uh, the 2 d two dimensional problem you we would consider next time in the next lecture uh, that means, lecture uh, 37th lecture we would consider and uh, we would solve some and we would take some examples based on the 2D cases right. So, the my purpose is to show you in very brief the finite element method is starting from the very concept and then how would we use it for the metal forming that is my purpose all right. So, I will again ask you that you please practice these concepts whatever we have discussed so far at least you uh, go through once and uh, please make your concept clear 
so that we would we would certainly pick up the the basic concept of finite element method a popular for the metal forming right we would continue this up to around uh, 38 to 39 lectures to build up and uh, we will take up some three dimensional metal forming problems how do we solve using these concepts and that is what i am going to prepare you people through this concept so that we would be able to consider uh, and understand the the metal forming modeling using finite element method so with this hope i thank you once again you all for keeping so much patience listening carefully asking questions and all that so but uh, please don't forget to communicate me give your feedback you uh, on the through the net uh, there may be certain questions objective questions as well as to clarify to make your knowledge and understanding judging etc so you please check the if it is questions you please make yourself strong by solving and uh, i once again Thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you once again.